We ha we've had the economic study um, impact analysis and an e mm -hmm. economic benefit study done, which I'm sure you've seen. But as we've talked to businesses even in the area, they've shared with us that they know that their demographic, especially in that area with the, the Place La Fontaine condo there, it's a very uh, elderly population tenant tenancy in there, excited about bringing in 150 staff, 60 plus volunteers uh, on a regular basis. They're going to be going and having breakfast and lunch and um, you know, dropping off their dry cleaning and going Jean Coutu to get their, their uh, you know, health and beauty supplies. They're going to be shopping in Vanier. Everything was disingenuous. They, they talk about 150 jobs that they're going to create. Well, these jobs are not created. These jobs are moving. The people that are coming with these jobs, most of them don't live in Vanier. So they wouldn't be spending their incomes in Vanier. They'd be getting on a bus and going back to wherever they, they lived before. The demographic information they used in it was for all of Ward 12, not Vanier. So when they said it could handle a 350-bed facility because it was a growing, thriving community, they were using the demographics for all of Ward 12. It includes the market and Sandy Hill. They refer to all this development that's been happening in Vanier. They, there was 1,400-odd condos they said were under development. When we, when we identified where they were, and which ones were still on the books, only 38 of them were in Vanier and still being built. Uh, they talked about government buildings being built in Vanier. The two they referred to were in train yards, which is an Alta Vista ward, which is two wards away. We're 24-7, so we have all the, these people coming to work that, you know, going to go buy coffee, lunch, and this and that. And so. I'm sure they'll want to eat at Finnegan's Pub on, on occasion. Uh, it's 150 people spread over seven days over three ships. So there's never more than I don't do the math, I don't know, 20 or 30 people at a time. Is this going to raise the crime rate, yes or no? No. Actually, it's proven to reduce the crime rate. Yeah. There's been examples in Vancouver, examples in Toronto, examples in throughout the U.S., um, Winnipeg, other areas where the crime rate actually has gone down. We're another pair of eyes and ears and so on on the street, right? So quite the contrary. Right? We're engaged people. Okay. We, we're seeing you're, you're doing a deal, you're wheeling a deal, well, let's... Let's talk to you. Like, like instead of just like, let's let's try to engage you and be part of the solution. I worry about people having a couple of beer and being out in the street having a smoke and people coming and panhandling for the eighth time. Uh, how long until there's going to be a fight? How long until there's going to be a problem? And, and it's not paranoia on my part. Uh, this current facility they have is consistently one of the top callers of emergency services. There there are problems there. They are top five every year and they're going to bring that next door to my business. And if there was any truth to that report, and it was going to generate all this economic impact and growth, other communities would be bidding on this. They would be calling me saying, hey, how can we get in it? How come Vanya gets this shelter and we don't? I mean, one of the, the, the points you're making here is that basically this is going to kind of ritz up the neighborhood. You will. Right? Well, I think so. And the neighborhood yeah. doesn't seem to think that that's the case. Yeah. So. No, much like when you, when you, you know, invest in your own property on a, on a rough street and you Resod your lawn and you paint the house and you change the siding and you update the windows. There's that element of enhancing the neighborhood and it tends to have a real trickle, a quick trickle down effect where other people hop on board with that type but of thing. But you can see why people would be skeptical about this, right? You need an amendment to the official plan and, doesn't hit, and it doesn't fit the zoning yet. Um, those are two pretty clear markers, usually, or red flags that something isn't going to fit a neighborhood, aren't they? It, it almost fits the, the sheltering part. Mm -hmm. And the way that it's currently, the motel is currently being used as a uh, city it's offsite, It's used for short-term right? housing, yeah. you know, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And I... Uh, yeah. Is this going to lower my property values? No. Have you seen how many condos they've been building all around us? <laughs> I don't think it's stopping anybody. <laughs> The interesting thing about moving to Vanier is that the, the tone was always very optimistic in the neighborhood, that it was a neighborhood that was changing, it was a neighborhood that was getting in new people, younger people into the neighborhood, young families who hadn't been there before. People who had lived there for decades were, were you know, ecstatic about the fact that it was safer to, to live in the community, that you know, we were getting more, more uh, you know, commercial spaces in, that kind of thing. Like it, was a very, it was a very optimistic sort of feeling in the neighborhood, and now that's almost entirely gone. Like, I just noticed myself, like, the neighbors you know, talk less, because everyone is just on edge all the time. And as you start to see people leaving the community, which we've already started to see, the middle class families have started to leave the community, I think you're going to start seeing that those who can afford to leave are going to leave, as we've already started to see. You're going to see a decline in business investment. So, you know, we don't know exactly who's going to be left or what sort of the community is going to look like at that point in time.